Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Vito Studio and I'm thrilled today to introduce our brand new Infographic Pack 3.0, designed to help you bring your data to life whether you're working on tutorial, presentation or explainer video. This pack has everything you need to make your visuals stand out. To give you a taste of what's inside, we're sharing a free sample or customizable bar chart title. It's an easy to use tool for showcasing data in a sleek professional way. In this video, I'll walk you through how to use the bar chart title to create impactful visuals for your project. You can download the free sample using the link in the description below and follow along to see it in action. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, you can download the sample by clicking the link in the description below. It will give you the zip file. Just double click on it to unzip it. It will give you a folder. In the folder, you find a couple of things. You got the license, the installation instruction, the TRFX file, and the font. Please select all the font and double click on them to start the installation process. It's very important that you install the font, otherwise the title will not work. So then you can just select the TRFX file and double click on it. It will just prompt open that window asking you if you want to install. Just select install, and then you can go over to DaVinci Resolve. Once in DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to effect titles visitor studio and then you can scroll all the way down to sample then in sample you'll have two titles actually you'll have the horizontal line layout and you got the bar overlay it's named as one and two meaning that we first need to bring the background and then we're gonna bring the bar overlay so let's do that right now. I'm just going to take the first one and drag it here in my timeline and then I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to overlay it right above it you can obviously extend or reduce the timing of those titles to fit the length of your project. Now together, let's see how that composition is made and how you can modify it very easily. So they share some common functionalities and they have a few differences. The first thing is that they have the same control in terms of animation. So here you will have the animation length in second, the animation in and the animation out. The animation length in second is basically the timing of the animation. So right now, for example, for the bar overlay, it's taking two seconds for the animation to be completed and for the background it's taking one second that way there is a slight offset meaning that the animation for the background is happening faster than the animation of the bar but if you wish to have everything for example happening at the same time you can simply here switch from two to one and now everything is just going to happen at the same time and the animation is twice the speed as it used to be. For the both of them, you can also choose the animation type. So here we have zoom in, zoom out, pan left, pan right, slide up, slide down and fade in. It's the same thing here for the animation out. The only difference is that for the animation out, you have the option to have no animation at all, which is not the case for the animation in because of the way the title is structured. We couldn't do that. If for whatever reason you don't want to have any animation in, what I would recommend is simply to just select both of your clip, create a compound clip, and then you just make a cut uh, where the animation is done. So here, for example, right there, the animation is over. Now you can just make a cut, delete the part that you want to delete, and that's it. You will have no animation in and here, no animation out. That's the quick workaround to achieve this. Now that we've covered the animation, let's go through how we can modify to add here our own value. As you can see right here, we have a bar count for the bar overlay. And then here for the line layout, we have a data count. Basically, we can select the amount of data that we want to be displayed. Right now, by default, it's 12. We choose the months of the year. But if we want, for example, to switch that to seven to have the day of the week instead, we can do that very easily. And then we just go back to the bar and we select seven as well and now we'll have only seven value being display but now as you can see there is an imbalance in our design we want to either remove that or we want to fill it up by extending uh, the length in between all bar so you have actually those two options so option one here for the bar overlay is simply to use the bar spacing slider and to just move that forward to create more space in between the bar so here I'm just going to do, for example, 0 0.107 and we got like a good spacing between each of them. Now I'm just going to take the exact same value and we're going to go over to the horizontal line layout and here we're going to write the same thing. And now with the data spacing slider, we get exactly the same spacing between the text value and our design is a balance once again. Another possibility will be to simply here completely uh, adjust the frame to make it fit with the bar. So what we can do is here on the horizontal layout, we can go over to graph background. And then here with the width, we're going to select 0.4, for example, to make it basically tighter together. And then I'm going to adjust the position 
here we go and now we made our graph fit with our bar so that's basically the two way you can adjust the layout to make it fit your project now obviously we need to change the data that are being displayed to do that i'm going to go bar to the horizontal line layout and we're going to go over to horizontal indicator and then here we can switch all of them so here i'm replacing it with monday then tuesday so on and so forth sometimes you may have some uh, display bug like this one where here the text for example is not show fully properly it's just like because there is a lot of data so just go back and uh, redo it and you should be fine also you can just click uh, around in your timeline and that can solve the problem so right now i've changed all my horizontal value for the day of the week instead of the month and now what if i want to change the vertical value well you can do that right here as well with the vertical indicator right now we have five values but you can add uh, any other value you want for example here if uh, instead of five i want to have 10 going from you know 10 to 20 30 40 50 etc um, i can do that right here so let me just add those value and show you how we can adapt that So now as you can see, I've added a bunch of values and now it's just going way out of the frame. So how can we just recalibrate that and just bring them all closer together? Well, we can do that very easily here with the line spacing. So I'm gonna reduce the line spacing, for example, to only one. And as you can see, it does bring everything tighter together. I'm just going to adjust that to make it fit my composition. So here we're going to increase it a little bit all the way until the 100K is hitting uh, the top of my graph. All right, perfect. I'm happy with that. But now as you can see, the line are not exactly matching all the increment where I would like them to be. So now what we can do is go to the grid and we can make some adjustment to the number of raw cell. Right now by default, it's four, but I want to change that to, for example, 10. You can also use stuff like the zoom, the width, the height to adjust specifically the position of those line to be properly aligned with your text. So right now, for example, I could increase the zoom to end up in a position that I like, for example, here, where each line is pretty much aligned with uh, the text. Now you have also a bunch of other control. For example, right now we got just the line, but if you want to have a grid background instead, you can do that here by increasing the number of column cells. So right now it's uh, at zero, but we can increase that and we can create a grid instead. You can change the grid opacity, you can change the grid color, uh, the thickness of the line, so on and so forth. There is really like a lot that you can do to really customize it as you want. And if you don't want to have anything, you can simply here remove the grid by bringing the opacity down to zero. And now finally, across those two titles, there is a bunch of cosmetic change that you can do to really make it fit your project, like the color or, for example, the corner radius. If we start here with those bar, as you can see here, we have the corner radius. We can either have straight uh, angle or we can have a fully rounded angle here at the tpd top uh, otherwise we can also change the overall size uh, position and scale of each of those bar so right now we're going to adjust the bar value for example if monday is supposed to it at 40k right here uh, we can do that by just adjusting here the position and making sure that it's hitting uh, the 40k mark then same thing for the second bar here for tuesday if we wanted to eat 60k you can just adjust it right here until it reach 60k we can continue to do that with each of the bar available on that bar chart and we can change the color if we want the color to be different so here if we want to have it red for example like a dark red we could do that right here and then here you can also adjust the position of the bar that can come in handy if you want to display multiple bar for example here i'm just going to move them slightly to the left to give them uh, space to be duplicated so here i'm going to then take my bar old option in my keyboard and then duplicate that to another layer and i'm going to take the bar on that second layer and move them slightly to the side like so now i can change another color like blue for example and we can now use that chart to display different uh, data so here we have two type of data that are being displayed for example and if you want to adjust that timing you can for example move it slightly forward and now you will have first the background coming in then you'll have the first bar and then you have the second set of bar appearing uh, right after it as you can see right now we're getting only seven fps because obviously there is quite a lot of things uh, going on right here there is a lot of different parameter which DaVinci has to process which slow down a bit the computer uh, so what I would recommend is that you go over to playback 
run the cache and then here select smart instead of none that's just gonna bring that red bar right above your title and when that bar gonna turn from red to blue when it's fully blue that means that the title has been cached in and you will be able to get real-time playback at whatever playback your timeline is set at in my case as you can see it's gonna be 30 fps and right now everything is playback uh, very smoothly and that's pretty much it. Hope this video was helpful and that this title will help you in your video production process. If you enjoy those kind of slick tool, we've built a ton of them in our infographic 3.0 pack that you can check. It's available on our website right now. We have a bunch of different graph, layout, roadmap, uh, a bunch of different assets that can allow you to just display data in a clean and nice way. We've made sure to make the tool as easy as possible to use and to have like a clean animation. So if you're into that, you can check that up on our website thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website including titles transition and templates built only for davinci resolve get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com